This presentation is a brief introduction to institutional theory and begins to think about how it might be useful in a research project about higher education policy and change. I'm Michael Lower, based in the Faculty of Law at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. I've prepared this presentation as part of the work to be done for the Doctorate in Higher Education Research Evaluation and Enhancement at Lancaster University. Institutional theory is inspired by the observation that organisations operating in a particular sector resemble each other to a surprising degree. It looks at this homogeneity and thinks about why it comes about. Take universities. People have a certain idea of the university that probably owes much to the mental, mental image of an Oxford College. This probably affects people working in higher education as well as others, except that the mental model of the university is more detailed and focuses in, on specific practices, in the case of the insider. The idea of the research-intensive university that also engages students in the learning process in a deep way might be the insider's mental concept. The idea of the university does not only shape the externals, organisation, governance and operation, but also the understanding and imagination of participants and outsiders alike. Fields emerge that draw together organisations meeting the same kind of needs. Higher education is one such field. Various factors combine to make the organisations within a field identify with each other and to make common cause. The, un the university, not this or that university, but the university in the abstract, is an institution. In Wiseman and Baker's words, it is a package of culture that defines a particular sector of society. Culture is everyday knowledge that is institutionalised. The knowledge can be understood, acted upon and shared thanks to its embodiment in an institution, because it forms part of a mental model of a particular idea of the university. Institutional theory sees institutions as being the building blocks of society. Institutions embody the scripts through which we make sense of the world. Wiseman and Baker say that society is made up of institutionalised culture that creates and spreads commonly held models of the individual and the social organisation, formal and informal. Institutions provide the lenses that, lenses that we need to see and make sense of the social world and our place within it. This does not explain, though, why institu institutions should all look alike. No one wants to be the odd man out. People want to be cool, on message, part of the in-crowd. This tendency to groupthink, this desire to fit in, affects organisations as well as individuals. It's almost as if all the, all the organisations in a field or sector are just one organisation. In certain respects, they seem to have a common controlling mind, even though they are autonomous and in competition with each other. For instance, we might say that there is a global education system, with a global higher education system as one component, even though there are regional or local variations. That is to say that the institutions through which we understand the world come to resemble each other more and more, and to do so at a global level. How does this happen? Institutional theory sees people and organisations as being engaged in a quest for legitimacy. Nations, organisations and individuals want to fit in and to conform to undeniably legitimate versions of themselves. No one got fired for buying IBM, the saying used to be. No one will get fired if they fit in with the consensus view of what an organisation should be like. In essence, then, the theory is very simple. It suggests that organisations simply play a game of follow the leader. If it stopped there, <clears throat> institutional theory would be plausible but limited. It would offer a philosophically interesting model of man in society, and a reasonable explanation of why people behave as they do, even though conformity seems irrational according to various accounts of what is rational. 
those making use of the theory go much further and look at the details of the processes by which institutions are formed and become established as legitimate. There's obviously scope for a lot of detailed empirical and theoretical work to be done to understand the details of the institutions that exist. One could look, for example, at how they're formed and operate, what hold have they got on real organisations and on individuals. The institution works by spreading not just a broad model, but also through the ongoing spread of new practices and ideas that are the institutional norm. The processes that drive organisations to resemble each other are many and various. They, they can be classified in a number of ways. This slide shows three isomorphic categories. A coercive pro process is one that involves the use of some law or regulation, though it might involve a form of non-governmental soft regulation. Clearly, understanding how this works is something likely to fascinate legal scholars, amongst others. Mimetic isom isomorphism refers to a tendency to deal with uncertainty by imitating the behaviour of other organisations that have had to respond to the same problem. Normative isomorphism stems primarily from the process of professionalisation. Organisations need to cope with change and innovation. This clearly could challenge the accepted model of a university. Think of e-learning, in-house learning or online courses now. In principle, it could lead to the emergence of a new model or of a more diverse organisational ecology. The theory explains, however, that at least in the short term, innovation is likely to lead to a common response of all of the organisations in the sector. The sector as a whole is likely to play follow the leader and to see how the most legitimate organisations in their field behave. They can then safely follow this legitimate response. This slide refers to some of the theories that we've encountered so far. It's easy to see linkages, compatibilities, and even expl explicit cross-references from institutional theory to structuration, for example. It makes me think they're all working on the same sorts of problem. It also suggests that the choice of one theory need not preclude a reference to other theoretical approaches. This slide shows some ideas for taking institutional theory as a point of departure. A decision to use the theory also suggests certain types of research topic and of research materials, method and methodology. This slide looks at some deficiencies or things to bear in mind when applying institutional theory. The theory might seem to suggest that there's no room for, for agents to change institutional scripts. This is not necessarily so, and one possibility is to look at how much room there is in a given context for individuals to depart from the, chi to depart from the script or to change the script. Second, the theory emphasises the search for legitimacy as a motivating factor. This is true, no doubt, but excessive insistence on this idea could lead to a distorted view of what drives action. Third, institutions work by shaping people's inner worlds. There is, of course, the possibility that in some cases people might outwardly conform to institutional demands while questioning them or even attempting to subvert them. So there is a question mark as to whether we can say that people naively accept institutional scripts. This slide shows some of the things that could be studied, questions that could be asked, or approaches that could be taken using institutional theory as the starting point. These are the articles that I read to try and try and understand institutional theory. They each provide far more than I've attempted to cover in this introduction. A reading of these articles makes one understand that institutional theory is absolutely vast, and that one, one could spend a professional lifetime applying it to the study of just one field or some specific aspect of an institution. 